This beautiful bear is our angel bear and this is what we're making today. So if you'd like to make one too, stick around. Another quirky project by Billy 50 Designs. And this is what all our pieces look like. Two foot pads, which you may have embroidered. Let's see. Which you may have embroidered. It's my arms. It's my arms. Okay. My back of head, which is cut two, so one in reverse. It's one snout. I need four pieces of ears, so cut cut four to reversed. Then I have my outside leg cut two, one reversed. And I have my inside leg cut two, one in reverse. I have my back cut two, one in reverse. My internal pocket cut two, one in reverse. Then I have my face pieces, which I have embroidered the eye on. I have my front body piece. And then I have my wings. So these are all the pieces we are going to be using to make our angel bear. So the first thing we have to do is cut out our front piece. So you would have stuck your two pieces of pattern together where the dotted line is, and you would have stitched out, you would have stitched out all of your embroidery pieces. Now, all we need to do is, there is a, this section marked on the pattern. I suggest you cut that square out because that is where your embroidery needs to sit to make sure that it is on the bear placed properly. Now this one is just a tiny bit over, but it will still, it's still within the boundaries of where I know that that's going to sit nicely. So we're just going to pop that there. And then we are going to draw around this piece. We have it all marked and then we're just going to cut that out. There we are, it's all cut out. So now we'll move on to cutting out all the rest of our pieces. I just wanted to show you this. Now with your arm, there's two marks on the pattern. We're going to leave that open because that's where we're going to be stuffing. So what I'm going to do is not only am I going to transfer those marks onto the fabric, but I'm just gonna make a little flap, just like that. So I've got some extra fabric there when I go to actually sew it up. So I like to put some pins in when I'm cutting to hold the two pieces together and then cut around. So we've got our little extra flap for when we need to hand stitch the back area closed. For these two pieces, the pattern has a solid black line and then you'll see that it has a dotted line. That dotted line represents where our zipper is going to be placed. And this is where our zipper pocket is going to be placed. So to cut it out, you just cut it out as normal. We're tracing around the full solid black lines, transferring any little marks like that. And where that dotted line is, I'm just putting a line there so I know that's where I need to iron later on. So same thing again here. And then I'm just gonna line that up. So that's that mark there. 
and I've got my marks here. That is where my zip is going to go. So now we move on to cutting them out. So just stick to the solid lines on this side. The dotted line is only for our reference for later on. So we're going to trace out our wings. So I've got two pieces of satin right sides together. Now with the wings, I'm not going to cut them out right now. I'm just going to leave them aside and we'll work on the wings later. I'm going to begin with our back and our internal pocket piece and you'll need a zip. I'm using an invisible zip, even though you can see it, haha. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, I'm using an invisible zip because you don't see it as much. Um, and I need it to be as long as this pocket here. Now, you can see that this is way too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to mark where the top of that is and then I'm going to mark where the bottom of that is. And I'm going to stitch on my sewing machine across here and across here. Before we do though, we are going to pull our zipper head down. So pull our zipper head down because we want to make sure the zipper head is in the middle because if it's not, then we're not, <laughs> we're not going to be open, able to open and shut our zip. So we're just going to stitch across here and we're going to stitch across here, which is going to give us the exact length that we need. Now that we've done that, you'll see that when I try and open that zip, it won't go past there. So we're not going to lose our zipper head. It's not going to fall off. So I'm going to take my scissors, not my fabric scissors, and I'm just going to chop and chop. And the rest can be thrown away. Let's work on our pocket first. So, so we have this dotted line here. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to open out our internal pocket pieces. I'm going to put both of the markings. So I'm going to mark both sides with my dotted line. And then I am going to fold this over and I'm going to fold it over. So this is the back side of the wrong side of the fabric. And I'm going to turn it over where that line is. And I'm going to iron down there. And I'm going to do that on both pieces. Okay, now I'm going to take, I'm going to turn that up that way. So now I've got my two pieces. So the outside is facing down on the table and you can see that I've got my two pieces folded. And what I'm going to do is I am just going to lay my zip on top. I'm going to match up where that end and where that end should be. Line it up with the edge and stitch down here. So if I open this, 
you'll see that I've got my teeth right on the edge. Let's see if I can show you that. So my teeth are sitting right on the edge on the other side. So I want to stitch all the way down there and then do the same for the other side. Now that will be our inside, even though that looks like the outside, because we're using an invisible zip, that is going to be our inside. All right, so we take our back piece now. And I'm going to take this to the machine and I'm going to stitch on this line here. I'm going to stitch from here to where that mark is and then stop. And then from here, from here to here. So that section is going to be open for the time being. I'm just going to press that seam open. Both sides, make sure it's nice and straight, pressed. Now I'm going to take my pocket piece with my zip half open and I'm going to lie out like that. And then I am going to put the top half, so this is the, the neck piece, the curved piece. I'm going to put that at the top and we want to place where that opening is, just below the start of that line that we sewed before to keep our zip shut. And then that should go all the way down to where, almost where the other one is. So we're going to pop our zip in the middle like that and we are going to stitch down, across, up and across to hold that zip in there. Now just beware that while you're doing this, this is flat, you don't wanna catch that up anywhere. So now your piece should look like this. So you should have a nice, neat, closed zip. And on the other side, it should look like this. I'm going to open it because for the rest of the time that needs to be open so we don't forget later on. Now, we're going to close these two pieces over. And what we're going to do is we're going to be sewing down the side of the internal pockets, but we're not going to be sewing along the bottom. We do that very last, it's the very last thing we do after we stuff the bear. So to do that, I'm just going to do that, hold that, and I'm just gonna go up and as close as I can to the zip. And then I'll do the same on this side here. Now when we open our zip, you'll see that there's the makings of a pocket. But at this point in time, the pocket is still open at the bottom and we need that to be able to stuff the bear later on. So we've done the back and now we're going to work on the front. So we're taking our front piece, we're going to fold it so I can match up the edges here because that dart that's the bottom. So I just want to match them up there and get a pin.
So I'm just going to sew from the bottom up to that point here. We're going to close that seam up. Alright, let's start to put everything together. So we're going to take our front body and we're going to take our inside leg. And I'm going to take shiny side and point the foot up. So I want my foot pointing up and then I'm just going to pin, match up these edges and pin it into place. Now that I've got that in place, I'm going to take this to the machine and stitch all the way around there. And I'm going to do exactly the same for the other side. So I'll pin this side on as well. All right, so I can sew that one as well. All right, the front of our legs on. Now we're going to take our back piece and we are going to sew the back side of our legs. So this is where the arms will, or chest will attach and this is where your legs attach. So we want satin sides together again. And we're matching up that top piece of the foot. So the top of the boot. And we're laying that there. And the other side. Satin sides together, boot pointing up. Make sure the toe is pointing up. Okay, now we can take that to the machine and stitch down here and down here. there. Now that with the shiny side up. So what we're going to do is put the front down. So there's the feet come out to the sides. So this seam here will match this one and this top of this shoe will match this one. So that's the first thing we're going to do. And then the other side, chest piece together first, sorry, toe piece together first. And now we'll take that to the machine and stitch all the way down there and all the way down there. So we've got our side seams sewn together. Now I'm going to take my wherever they are. Let's see. I'm going to take my pinking shears and I'm just going to snip around this curve. Now, when you do this, make sure, well, you can do it either with your pinking shears or if you're not confident, you can just do it with these little scissors, but we're just going to make some snips in here to relax the curve so it doesn't pull and it's not tight. Just be very careful. Watch your cutting when you're cutting around here. Okay. 
okay and the same thing here on the foot Okay. Now we are going to do the bottom. So I'm going to pick up the bottom where we've joined that and I'm going to pick up the piece that is the bottom of the zip for the back and I'm just going to pop a pin in there just to hold it for now. Now you'll see that when I stretch this part out, I've got the back of the leg, around the bottom, around the bottom, and the, around the bottom, and back of the leg. So we're going to pin all of that in place. So I've put a pin here, the center back and the bottom, I'm going to stretch this out and put a pin where that seam is there. This is going to give me a place to start. And I'm going to pop one in here at the end. And that side's gone in nicely. Now we start at the other side. So where the seams are, we'll put a pin. Put a pin just there. And now we'll start to pin all the way around to the bottom. So that's his bottom. So I'm going to start at one end and stitch all the way around. Now we're moving on to the feet. Okay, so you can see we've got the makings of a bear here. First thing I'm going to do is fold these in half and mark or even snip, make a little snip, tiny, tiny snip because I'm marking the halfway point. I'm doing the same for the tops. I'm going to do that for both pieces. Now with our feet, I'm going to open them up and I'm going to match the top and bottom seam together and then I'm going to smooth that out and then I'm going to make a little snip there for the halfway point. Match up my seam, do the same over here and then the other foot leg I should say all 
All right, now, um, let's see. The angel goes on this foot. So I'm going to take this piece. I'm going to match up the top seam and put a pin. Doesn't want to go through the embroidery, that's okay. Match up the bottom. with one pin and now the sides the other side and now that I have that in there I can just go round and check that it is in the right spot. Put more pins in there to keep it in place. The more pins you have holding this in its spot, the better the result because everything will be even. We've got that in there. So now we're going to do the same on the other foot. So I've got both my feet in there. Now I'm going to take this over to the machine, but when I sew it, I'm going to flip it up this way and I'm going to have the foot pad face down as I'm sewing around. And then that way I can check that I'm not getting any wrinkles. Now before I do any snipping on the feet around the curves, I'm going to turn my feet in the right way so I can have a look. Just make sure that they've come out okay. Yep. Okay, there's one little catch here, so at the bottom of that foot, so I'll just fix that. This one is all good. So I'll just go back to this one. I can have a look at the bottom. Where is it caught? Oh, I see. Okay, so I've turned that through. I'm happy with how the feet have come out. Everything seems to be matching up. Now, the one thing I am going to suggest that you do is where your zip is, open it. Now, remember, we've, we're still able to put our hands through there because we need that for stuffing, but we will need this to be open. Okay, all right. Now we can move on to the head. For the head, we have the face. We have the snout, we have our ears, so I've got four there, ear and ear, and I have the back of the head. So I'm going to start with the back of the head. The back of the head is the flatter side, the side that's closer to the dart. So I'm just going to go ahead and stitch that all the way along there. So there's the back of my head all done. Now you'll see where the darts are. I'm just going to fold that over, 
put a pin in there. Fold the dart over. Pop a pin in there. And then I'm going to take that to the machine and I'm going to stitch those two darts. There's the back of my head all done. So we'll put that aside and then we'll take our faces. Now, people always, when you haven't got the eyes on there already, people always get muddled up, which is the line I'm supposed to be sewing first. It's always nose to chin. So if you can remember nose to chin, you won't get it wrong. So put these two together. Take that to the machine and stitch nose to chin. Now, I'm going to take my snout, I'm going to place it like that, so the center, where the center seam is. I'm gonna pop a pin right in there. And then I'm gonna take this corner to the top of the head. And now I'm going to pin down to the nose. So this is a little bit bendy. It's not a straight cut, so go slow. Do as many pins as you need to make sure you get the exact shape. So, and you'll do that just by, just by continuing to do little bit by little bit. And you'll find that it just falls into place See, a little bit by a little bit. Okay, now I've done one side, so now the other side, we just take the top of the head and the snout, top of the snout, and pin them together. And again, do the same. So we'll just go a little bit by a little bit, all the way down. matching the edge of the fabric as we go. Then when you get down to the nose, if you need to make any adjustments, you can do that then. might have put the first pin in just a little bit crooked. So let's take that first pin off. Alright. Stretch that out to the corner. this side. Remember the more pins the better. If you need to use 40 pins in that corner, use 40 pins in the corner. <laughs> you want it to stay exactly where it's meant to be. And just keep fiddling with it. If you have to put your pins in and out a couple of times, that's fine. All right, I think, I think I got it now. There we are. There we go. That fits better now. All right, you can see that that all sits nice and flat. 
So now I'm going to take this to the machine and sew all the way around the edge. And I'm going to follow the curve of the fabric. Okay, that looks fine. So I'm just going to snip a little bit around that snout. Now don't get close to the edge. You just want to relax that fabric there a little bit. Now when I turn it in, see it's a bit more relaxed. Oh, it sits beautiful now. See? Okay. Now we're going to do the ears. So, shiny sides together. I'm going to take that to the machine, leave the bottom edge open and just stitch around there. Just like that. I will do that for both ears. Just going to put some snips around the edge of the seam. So I'm cutting the edge, but I'm not going all the way down to where the seam is. I'm just taking the stress off the fabric and just relaxing it a little bit. And that'll help it sit nicer when it's in the other way. So we'll just turn that in. And get an end of a pencil. And you'll see that they are sitting really nice. And if you want to iron them now, you can. Just make sure your iron hasn't gotten too hot because we're going to be ironing the shiny side. Okay. Now, if you want fluffy ears, put a little bit of stuffing in there. If you want floppy ears, leave them as is. But I am going to put a tiny bit of stuffing in there today. And when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit. Like a cotton ball, just enough like a cotton ball. I'm gonna put a pin there to hold that shut. little bit like a cotton ball pop that in there hold it shut with a pin and now I'm going to take my front now to position the ears we're going to use these seams here so I'm going to put the edge of the ear up against the edge of the seam And same on this side. So find our seam, put that up against it and I'm just putting the edge of the fabrics together. And they're not overhanging or anything like that, they're just right together. Now I'm just going to take that to the machine and stitch that as close to the edge as possible just to hold it in place while we put everything together. OK, 
Okay, so they're just hanging on the edge there. And now we're going to take, we're going to just lie that down flat and I'm going to take the back of the head and I'm going to match the top of that seam with the center of that snout right up there. Right like that. Just gonna put another pin there right before the ear. Right before the ear. Okay, now I'm gonna stretch that one down to the edge. I'm gonna pop a pin in there. And then I'm just going to finish that off with pins all the way around. Okay, once I've got that all in there, I'll take this to the machine and stitch all the way around, leaving the bottom open. Lovely. All right, so now I'm just checking that I haven't got any stitching showing from where I tacked in the ear before. I'm just gonna turn that back in this way. And again, just around that seam that we just sewed, so the side seam, I'm just going to relax that seam by putting a couple of little cuts in there. Now remember, don't cut your stitches, don't cut all the way up to your stitches. Okay, I'm going to turn that through. All right. Now, if you want to put on a plastic nose, then you should do that now. You can do your eyes now if you haven't embroidered them on. But we want the facial features, the eyes and the nose done now. So, so there's two type of noses. You can have the heart shaped nose or just the regular nose. And I'm going to pin it. So the V part covers the top seam here. So right like that. So when I poke it over, Two curvy bits are going to go on top of the nose and the bottom of that heart is going to line up with that seam there. Okay. Now, I'm also going to start under where the bottom of that nose would be. In the centre. All right. Pull the string down. Just like that. You can finish off your face however you wish. I think I might just do a little straight face. So I'm just going to go here, go across, That's it. That's all I'm going to do. 
Okay. Now I'll tie that off and I'll stitch this on. Now we're going to take our head, we're going to line the front up with the front and the back up with the back. Now again, before you do anything, please remember to have your zipper pocket open. Now body turned inside out, head turned right way, pop it in there and then I'm going to line up the back seam. Now just remember you've got three little notches there because you've got your two darts. So make sure you line up the center one. Now I'm just going to put pins all the way around. Okay, once we've got all our pins in there, we're just going to take that over to the machine and stitch all the way around. Now that's all on but before we do anything else I'm just going to take this pocket at the back and I'm just going to fold over the edge like that just a small one and I'm going to press it okay so just iron that all right so that's that now we can turn this in and have a look now we're going to be this is why I told you before, keep the zipper open. Let's push it through. Okay, well that's all set nice and well. Now this is where we will be stuffing through. All right. So let's go ahead and get the feet stuffed. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera off while I do this because it's going to take a little while. We're almost done stuffing. Looks pretty good. All right. Once you're happy with how it's all sitting, just take your little pouch here and we're just going to match up those edges. And then I'm going to take that to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch right on the very edge there. Now you can do that by hand if you wish, if you want to, if you want, if you're bothered about how it looks on the inside, um, but I'm just going to do it on the sewing machine. All right, now we've got that all sewn. All I'm going to do is push my hand in there, move the stuffing around so I can get that 
pocket pushed out because I want it to be through the center of the beer like that. So just keep fiddling around until you get that. And then you'll see that I have a nice pocket and I can put a lock of hair or a hospital band or a photo or wedding rings or any little memento. Zip it up and it's nice and safe. Now with our wings over the back, we're not going to see that zip. So all we have to do now is to make our arms and our wings. Okay, so I'm just going to take this to the machine. I'm going to start stitching here. I'm going to stitch all the way around and then I'm going to stop stitching there. I'm going to do that for both of the arms. I'm just before I turn those through that little flap there I'm going to push it all the way back to where the stitching line is and I'm going to press it do that for both of those This is just going to give me a nice crisp line when I'm ladder stitching them closed later on. All right, now before I turn these through, I'm going to go round and again release the stress on this fabric. Turn that in the other way. Okay, now I'm going to stuff those. So there's my two little stuffed arms. They will go in there like that. So I just need to ladder stitch these closed, those creases out of there, make it easier. There we go. Once there's no creases, I can go ahead and ladder stitch that closed. So I'll do both of those and then meet you back here. Now we're up to the part where we're going to put our arms on. So they're all stuffed. And I have gotten a um, couple of little buttons. Let's see. Aren't they adorable? And I'm going to use that for the outside of the arm. So I'm sure you all have your own way of doing this, but... I will show you how I'm going to do it. Now I've got some upholstery thread. Um, New So Duro. It's an M40 thread um, that I use and that's really tough and it won't break. So I'm going to start with my button, my arm, figure out where I want it to be. Put through that way first. And then through this way. And then I'm just going to go 
go around one more time just to make sure it's secure on a little arm first okay and now I'm going to choose the spot where I want my arm to sit I'm thinking about there and I'm going to push it across so it's in the same I want it to be in the same spot on the other side that looks about right and now Okay, <laughs> that one's on there. Now, same for this arm. Let's put this one through. Okay, looks like we're getting somewhere. Okay, so now I'm going to continue going back and forward through those same holes or as close to as possible. without poking myself it's a bit tricky I've just got to keep fluffing around until they kind of just stick there. Okay, back to oh, oh dear, poor Teddy. Now it's sort of starting to get stuck, which is what we want. Now it might be a bit easier to get through the holes. Or maybe not. Now you don't want to pull it too tight because you still want to be able to see the writing nice and clearly. But you don't want it so loose that it's hanging off either.
So now this time I'm going to go through the arm, but not through the body again. Take that under there. And go through here, out the button again. And one more time out here. The good thing is this doesn't fray, so if it does come out of your needle, it's quite easy to get it straight back in. Oh, now, now I'm not going to be able to do that, see? <laughs> okay. Put this through. And now we're going to tie it off by going through to the other side. Just like that. I'm quite happy with that. Now I'm going to lie him down. I'm just going to put this through here a couple of times to tie a knot. And then I'm going to poke this needle out down through his arm, pull that, and then where that pops out, I'm just going to, where that popped out, I'm just going to snip that off, and our arms are on. There you go. And now our arms can, can actually move as well. Fantastic. All right, now we'll move on to the last thing, which is our wings. So this is the foam we're going to be using to make our wings. Um, I sourced this from Spotlight in Australia. It's not the cheapest thing, and I'm sure there's other ways you can do this, but this is what I'm going to do. So I have my angel wing pattern. I have my satin with my angel wing pattern traced out, but not cut out. Hmm. My light went off, but not cut out. And I will put that aside. And then I'm going to open up some foam. I'm going to take my wings and I am going, I am going to cut off this piece here and then I am going to trace around my wings might need a pen Now, I'm going to cut these out, but I'm going to cut them on the inside of this line. So everything else is cut out on the line, like that. And this one, I'm just going to cut out just a couple of millimeters on the other side of the blue line. So I just want this slightly smaller then 
than the actual wing and you can see here if I show you like that's how much it's just a couple of millimeters And there's our wings. Now you'll see if I sit my wings on top, you'll see how it's just a tiny bit smaller. You can see the edges. Okay. Now when you do cut foam, um, just make sure you're not cutting it on an angle because you might have one side larger than the other, as I have done right here. Okay, all right, so now we'll go to our wings. I am going to take this to the machine and I am going to sew on the actual line. I'm going to sew this one on the actual line and I'm going to leave this section open for me to turn the wings through. Now that we have that sewn all the way around, I am going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut it out. But where this part is, this little part that we left open, I'm going to leave a flap and that's for closing it up later like we've done with all the others. So I'm going to go in there. I'm not going to go right to the edge. And I'm going to start to cut around. Okay. Now we have to be really, really careful when we do this one. We want to, we want to give this a little snip on the curves, but we want to make sure we really don't touch our stitches. We do not want to go through those stitches. Same thing, I want to go up close. Close, but not on. Before I do anything, I'm going to iron these little fluffy things back. So they're nice and crisp when it comes time to hand sew them together. There we go. And now I'm going to turn them in. This just takes a little time and a little patience. because You don't want to rip anything. It will take a few minutes just to fold this out and massage everything. Now I'm going to put my pencil in there. I'm going to go around all the seams and push out all those little fiddly bits. And I'm using the blunt end of the pencil. I'm not using the end with the lead because I don't want to poke that through any seams. I can get one. Little forceps. Gently. Again, don't want to be doing anything I shouldn't be pushing through. See how you just have to go slow and eventually it'll all work its way through. Okay, and for the other side. Now I'm going to iron that and this too is going to take 
a little bit of time because we really want to push out those seams and get that nice curve going. So a little bit at each time. I like to give them a bit of a roll. Helps them pop out. See how that one's popped out nicely now. Just a little roll. Just a few little bumps along here. You'll see now I'm starting to get that curve. Now, unfortunately, this is the hardest part. So through that opening there, we are going to put <laughs> our wings in. I know it sounds crazy, but they're going to fit. Okay. So let's just start. It's going to take forever. Now, once you've got it in for the most part, you can start massaging it. Massage my edges. You see now that I have my little wings. All right, now what we want to do is we want to figure out which is our front and our back. You just pick the one that looks the nicest. And I am going to sew from the center here to the center here, straight down one line of stitching. One line of stitching. Now I am going to just come over here and I'm going to hand stitch this closed. So now I'm going to hand stitch that closed. That's nice and closed. Let's give it a little bit more of a massage. Once it's all sitting beautiful, I'm happy with how that's all sitting. Now we are going to do our final bit, which is three rows of stitching. Now it goes like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's all we have to do. So we're going to start where each of those where each of those bumps are. So we've got our lines there. This one I might just angle a bit more just until you get it looking how you like it. And then 
I am going to just sew up. Now I'm going to sew up only to where the bottom half of the wing is. So all three lines will end in the one spot. Okay? So you can take that to the machine and do that. run out of bobbin. And that, my friends, is our wings finished. Now to attach my wings, whoop, I'm going to be using just hook and eyes. Um, for those of you who don't know what hook and eyes are, <laughs> on the back of your bra. Come on. Here we go. There's a the little things that go on the back of your bra to do your bra up. So, I am going to put the actual hook parts here on my wings and I am going to put my eyes just here. Now I've measured out three centimeters so one and a half each side so they're going to sit three centimeters apart. And then I've measured down, it's one and a half centimetres down to where it's going to hang. So if we find out one and a half centimetres, we want it to hang just there, and just there. Three centimetres apart. There's one. There's two. Okay, so now they're marked. So now I can go ahead and sew them on. I suppose you could use snaps or anything else you can think of. Um, you could probably even hot glue them on at the top. But I want to have them so they are removable in case of having to send it in the mail. Um, I want to be able to take it off and fold them over. I don't want them to be crushed in the delivery. So let's, let's go ahead and sew those on. And then we'll be finished. And here we have our bear. Yay! It's finally finished. So the wings are removable. So if we put them in the mail, we can fold them in half and they won't get squashed. Um, they're just secured with a hook and eye on the back. So you just pop them straight on there like that. And now they're back in place. We have our secret pouch in the back where we can hide some mementos, whether that be a wedding ring or a lock of hair or anything else that you've got. And then when it's all zipped up and our wings are back on, nobody will know that it's there.
This says, this angel bear with wings so fine carries love through space and time. A touch of heaven in each embrace, a love that time cannot erase. That embroidery is included. I wrote that and it's included with the bear, as are the templates for the feet and the eyes. So this is a little bit different to your standard memory bear where this one is more of a memorial that is uh, put away on a shelf or in a corner somewhere as a display piece. It's not really a cuddle bear, but we can make a cuddle bear to match, which is what I'll do next. In the meantime, this is our beautiful angel bear. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and like this page and hit the little bell so you'll be notified every time a new video is released.